Who was Ruth Bader Ginsburg and why is there such a big storm of controversy surrounding her death? There have been demonstrations in the streets, President Trump was booed visiting her casket, and we've even seen protesters try to disrupt a memorial service. We will roll back Roe v. Wade. Surprise, surprise, a lot of this has to do with the upcoming US election between President Trump and Joe Biden. But before we get to the controversy, it's important to understand who Ruth Bader Ginsburg was. RBG, as she was affectionately known, was one of nine justices on the US Supreme Court, which is the top court in the country, kind of like Australia's High Court. But that's not all that she was known for. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg was a legal giant and a pioneer for women. She actually argued a half dozen cases for the, at the court in the 1970s uh, on behalf of the movement to have legal equality for men and women. During her time as a lawyer, RBG also co-founded the Women's Rights Project, which was involved in hundreds of cases about gender equality. She's my superhero. We owe her a tremendous debt. She believed in equality for all people. Her work over the years inspired countless Americans, and later in life, she actually became a bit of a celebrity. It has been said that Ruth wanted to be an opera virtuoso, but became a rock star instead. She might be the only Supreme Court justice to become a meme. He's not kidding. She scored the nickname Notorious RBG, named after the rapper Notorious B.I.G., who also happened to be from Brooklyn, New York. So loud six to hear Biggie Smalls be. You can find RBG on late night talk shows. I would never, never exercise to that noise. She had celebrity impersonators. She was the subject of documentaries. I am 84 years old and everyone wants to take a picture with me. <laughs> and there were even films made about her life. You're asking us to overturn nearly a century of precedent. I'm asking you to set a new precedent. Supreme Court justices like RBG serve until they retire or die. And this is where a lot of the controversy is coming from. When it comes time to replace a Supreme Court justice, it's up to the president to nominate a successor and then it goes to the Senate, which is their upper house, who has a vote on whether to approve them. Trump's already made his pick, Amy Coney Barrett. I assure you that I will meet the challenge with both humility and courage. The thing is, some politicians don't think a big decision like this should be made right before an election. This is gonna be decided by the American people and the next president, whoever that may be, will, will fill this vacancy. They've also argued that appointing a Supreme Court justice in an election year isn't something that's historically done. It does bear repeating that there hasn't been a vacancy created in a presidential election year filled in 80 years. This appointment should be made by the next president. The other side of that argument comes from senators who say it's an important part of their job and it doesn't matter how close to an election it happens. Uh, we have an obligation under the Constitution should we choose to take advantage of it. Uh, to fill the vacancy, and I assure you that's very likely to happen. If you're thinking, wow, I can't believe those identical twins with the same name have such different opinions on the subject, it's, it's the same guy. It's Republican Senate leader Mitch McConnell, except one of them is his opinion in 2016, and the other is his opinion in 2020. Following the death of Justice Antonin Scalia in 2016, Republicans in the Senate blocked the nominee put forward by President Barack Obama, what is shocking is is the uh, the hypocrisy of the Republicans, led by Senator McConnell, uh, to go directly opposite to their position when Justice Scalia died and Barack Obama was in office, coming up to an election. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham even encouraged Democrats to use his words against him if the Republicans changed their mind the next time it happened. If there's a Republican president in 2016 and a vacancy occurs and the last year of the first term, you can say, Lindsey Graham said, let's let the next president, who it, whoever it might be, make that nomination. And you could use my words against me and you'd be absolutely right. And here is what Lindsey Graham is now saying in 2020. I will be leading the charge to make sure that President Trump's nominee has a hearing, goes to the floor of the United States Senate for a vote, because that is my job and I believe I am doing what the people of South Carolina want me to do in this regard. 
Mitch McConnell has said that he thinks things are different this time around, because in 2020, the Republicans controlled the presidency and the Senate. Whereas in 2016, Democrats only controlled the presidency. But why would Republicans and now Democrats even want to block a president from choosing a Supreme Court justice? The whole point of being a judge means making decisions based on the law and not your personal opinions. So technically it shouldn't really matter who chooses them as long as they're good at their job, right? Well, like a lot of things to do with politics, it's unfortunately a bit more complicated than that. Judges in the United States are often labelled as being conservative or liberal or moderate, depending on the kinds of decisions they've made throughout their career. One of the big things about being a judge is how you interpret words on a page. If your interpretations are closer to the kind of ideology that the Republican Party has, then you might get labelled a conservative. If your interpretations are more in line with what Democrats believe, then you may be labelled a liberal judge. Trump's nominee, Amy Coney Barrett, is considered to be a conservative by some because of some of the rulings she's made in the past, her affiliations with a conservative organisation called the Federalist Society, and also because she's been picked by Trump, who's a conservative president. Well, if Barrett is confirmed, it would take a court that had been essentially a five to four court with conservatives in the majority and make it a six to three court. So I think the Democrats have reason to worry but it's not just about the possibility of future laws made by Democrats being blocked or old laws that Democrats have made like Obama's healthcare being taken down a peg. Some are worried about the impact this could have on the upcoming election. President Trump has already accused the Democrats of trying to cheat. This is going to be a fraud like you've never seen. He says that mail-in voting, which is being encouraged by Democrats because of COVID-19, leads to fraud and that the Supreme Court will end up playing a role in who wins the election. And I think this will end up in the Supreme Court. And that's why so many Democrats are alarmed uh, that there could be so many Trump appointees in the Supreme Court who may then award an election challenge to the president. When it comes to mail-in voting, there is a legitimate concern that it needs to be handled properly because there will be a huge increase in mail-in votes this year because of COVID-19. But when it comes to mail voter fraud, a commissioner of the Federal Election Commission has said there's simply no basis for the conspiracy theory that voting by mail causes fraud. Also, according to a recent study, the rate of actual voting fraud overall in the US isn't very high. So if the Democrats are unhappy with how all of this is going, what can they realistically do? Not much. Right now, they don't have the votes needed to block or delay a vote. What some top Democrats have mentioned in the past is increasing the number of Supreme Court justices from nine to 13 if they win the next election. There isn't actually a limit on how many Supreme Court justices you can have, and stacking the court with another four liberal justices would swing the majority away from the conservatives. So where does all of this leave us? Even though people think they have an idea of how Trump's nominee will vote, we won't actually know until she becomes a Supreme Court justice if she gets approved. And people that know her say that she wouldn't let her personal opinions affect her judgment. She has said over and over again, whatever her personal, political or religious beliefs, her fidelity is to the rule of law first, foremost and only. As for the future of the Supreme Court, Unfortunately, many politicians believe it's only going to get more ideologically divided from here on out. You're going to have the most liberal members of your caucus <clears throat> pushing you to pick the most liberal judges because you don't need to have to reach across the aisle to get any of our input. And we'll do the same. So over time, the judiciary is going to be more ideologically driven because the process in the Senate now does not require you to get outside your own party. And with that, I'll leave you with the words of Ruth Bader Ginsburg and what she hoped for the future of the court. I don't know what it will take, but we really should get back to the way it was when people were examining the qualifications of someone to be a, a, a judge rather than trying to guess how they would vote. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and also check out the ABC Education website. It's got heaps of great resources for parents, teachers and students.